Steve Nash has never coached a day in his life. Always been a player. Then when he retired, didn't think he was going to coach, didn't know what he wanted to do. He called up the GM of the Nets, whose name is Sean Marks, and said, I'm interested if you're interviewing. One thing led to another. One interview led to two. Bing, bang, boom. Steve Nash has been hired. No sooner did Steve Nash get hired that certain people in the media said, look, another example of white privilege. How could Steve Nash be hired with no experience when there are so many African-American candidates, minority candidates, so many people with more experience, more qualified? Nothing's getting better. There was an outcry. As someone who's hired a bunch of managers, I have said it. I'm going to say it one more time. Maybe more because we do an episode every day. We hire the best people for the job. I don't care what your color is. If you're not qualified, you're not being hired. If you are qualified, you're going to be hired. I don't care if you're white, brown, purple, pink, or red. Can you manage a game? You think the Brooklyn Nets are in a position where they're going to purposely hire a white person or a black person or a brown person or a purple person or a red person? They need to win games. They've got Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. They haven't done anything. You bring in a player like Steve Nash, who's won the MVP twice, been to the All-Star game probably seven or eight times. One of the best all-time players who was a coach while he was on the court. Times are different. The days of putting in 10 years as an assistant coach, working your way up the ranks, those days are gone. Like in baseball. The days of being a minor league coach, working your way up from single A to double A to triple A, then being a coach at the major league level, and then becoming a manager, gone. First time managers, former players, it's happening all the time. We did it with Joe Girardi, Aaron Boone, Alex Cora. I could go on, but then I'd have to think of others, but there are. That doesn't mean Alex Cora did not get the job in Boston although he had been the bench coach in Houston, by the way. But my point stays the same. He did not have managerial experience. Aaron Boone had none. Steve Nash had none. Why is it because of what's going on today? I acknowledge the systemic racism and the social inequality. I acknowledge there's not enough diversity anywhere and It happens when you educate kids and you teach them that they can be anything and you give them the base and explain that you're not going to make your living on the court. You can make it off the court. Stay in school, do your work, get the job that you want. But it takes time. Steve Nash wasn't pulled out of thin air. But he was put in a position where he was on the defense from the first second he was hired. Having to explain away the fact that he was hired, had to almost apologize. And so he did. He had to admit that he's benefited from white privilege. I've admitted to you that I've benefited from white privilege. That doesn't mean that I'm either racist or that I'm not racist. Recognizing your lot in life is about self-evaluation. Recognizing that you may get the benefit of a doubt because of your color and that makes you work less hard, you are not going to get anywhere. Steve Nash is deserving of a chance to coach. He's not deserving of keeping his job as head coach of the Brooklyn Nets don't do well. Believe me, Steve Nash, you are going to get fired in your coaching career. I guarantee it. They fire white coaches, they fire black coaches, and they fire brown coaches and purple coaches and red coaches. This is a results business. Yet we are in a society right now where we are forced to defend ourselves even when we did nothing wrong. He interviewed for the job and in the minds of the owners and of the GM, Sean Marks, he was the best person for the job. But still, he had to say, the 
that I'm not saying his position was a factor as far as white privilege. I think as white people, we have to understand we have a certain privilege and a benefit by the color of our skin in our communities. We have a long way to go to find equality and social and racial justice. I hope that I'm a great ally in that cause. Steve Nash has been an ally in that cause his entire life. The reason why you didn't get Steve Nash to say that he was hired simply because of his color is because that is BS. It's horse hockey. Are we going to be at a point where anyone who's hired who's not a person of color has to defend himself and anyone who's hired who is a person of color doesn't necessarily have to be qualified? That's an insult to the qualified people of color who deserve jobs. You want to take issue with people, you take issue with owners and presidents who are racist and hire incompetent people no matter their color. Organizations are bending over backwards. And when is it too much? Word came out yesterday about the Academy Awards. Did you read that? Academy Awards have new rules about who can be nominated for best picture starting like in 2024. They have to satisfy one of four criteria. You have to have a person of a minority in a supporting actor or above role in your movie, certain percentage in the crew, et cetera, in order to be considered to be a best picture candidate. Do you know what that becomes when you do things like that? It becomes a check the box. It becomes a worksheet that a producer has to make sure is filled out before a production happens. Oh, we need 30% of this. We need 5% of that. When we were building Marlins Park, we promised to have minority business involvement. We promised that we would have not just minority owned business, also women. We had to submit to the county every subcontractor for the ballpark and we had to categorize them. There was never a moment where we would give a contract to a company not deserving because they were minority owned. There was a time when we had to give a contract to minority owned businesses to make sure we were at the right percentage and it was at a price that was not competitive. It brings up a fascinating question. Should you be forced to make a hire of a company that's more expensive, buy a product that's more expensive, a service that's more expensive, a coach who's less qualified? How far do we go? Is it suitable? If companies are literally saying, Ugh, this is something else we have to do, is that furthering the cause for equality? Not to me. Not to me.